Welcome to The Bottom Line. You are watching Just Hindi TV and I'm Ash Mehta. Today we are talking with Mr. Arnold Drucker, the Nassau County Legislator of the 16th District, as part of our ongoing coverage of Long Island, New York's political scene. Uh, Mr. Drucker, first of all, thank you so much for being here with us. My pleasure, Ashmeda. We look forward to getting to know a little bit about some of the work that you've done and the impact you've been having uh, within Nassau County. Um, but first of all, um, we are ahead of a very important election season in uh, Long Island. Um, you yourself said Nassau County, is at a, Nassau County is at a turning point. Tell us what you mean by that. Well, I believe that I got involved in politics in 2016 in the height of the corruption mess that was plaguing Nassau County mm -hmm. with the previous uh, county executive and his administration. Mm -hmm. And we were able to immediately get in there and try to change things and correct that corrupt culture that was existing. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a new county executive that was elected in 2017, mm -hmm. and we've been on the road to getting this county back in great financial health so that we can continue to provide the essential services that our residents uh, pay for. We mm -hmm. pay high taxes here Absolutely. in Nassau County, Absolutely. and everyone is entitled to get the services that, they're, mm -hmm. that they pay for. Can you tell us a little bit about what uh, specific uh, services or uh, areas that you've uh, had an impact in? Well, uh, since I've been on the legislature, uh, I have endeavored to uh, put forth legislation that protects and enhances the health and safety of our communities. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, I was able to get a, a bill passed called Tobacco 21, which is now law throughout the state of New York. Uh, we passed it in Nassau County in 2017, which uh, prevented anyone from buying tobacco products mm -hmm. uh, under the age of 21. Mm -hmm. um, about a year ago, I was also very much involved after meeting regularly with the school districts in our community, and we have great, wonderful schools. And, but the problem with vaping Absolutely. started to materialize. Yeah. And I was very much concerned about it because it, we, I saw about a year ago that this was a rising epidemic. Mm -hmm. And it really was something that was dangerous and it was, now we're seeing the results of it, yeah. but it was a health crisis. Mm -hmm. And I was able to file legislation. It recently got passed banning the flavored vapes mm -hmm. uh, from being sold anywhere. Mm -hmm. Um, and now it's become, it's become law throughout the state of New York, but I filed it back in May, mm -hmm. and it was recently passed. Uh, I also passed a bill preventing before, the, before this uh, ad banning on advertising of the vape products, mm -hmm. too, because mm -hmm. it was the advertising of it in the local convenience stores that was attracting the youth. Absolutely. It was very colorful and, and right, the promotions. Right, and the flavors. Yeah, so geared towards this is something we, 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 we banned that type of advertising within fi uh, 500 feet of a school mm -hmm. or park, playgrounds, daycare centers, community centers, anything like that. So we banned that uh, advertising. Um, so I've been involved in trying to promote the health and safety. I passed legislation last year um, manda mandating sexual harassment training mm -hmm. of all Nassau County department heads, um, deputy county executives, um, people who are in positions of supervision mm -hmm. uh, in Nassau County. This was in the height of the Me Too movement. Right. And uh, I wanted to make sure that Nassau County was a healthy, safe place to work. Mm -hmm. We should not be embroiled in any problems, and I wanted all of our county supervisory position people to be adequately trained for that. Very nice. Uh, one of the big issues on Long Island has also been the opioid crisis. You've done some work in this area. The opioid crisis is, is, is a, a tremendous problem. You know, we see deaths every year throughout this country that is just staggering. And, and preventable. And preventable. And what I've done in my community, in this community, is I believe in education first. Mm -hmm. If we can educate the parents, we can teach them coping skills, we mm -hmm. can teach them how to deal with their children, how to communicate better. Mm -hmm. So I've had forums in my community, Pathways to Prevention, mm -hmm. where we have experts in the field come down, recovering addicts, 
who mm -hmm. talk to people, talk to the, the, the members of the community, the parents, trying to educate them on ways that they can be more communicative with their children, mm -hmm. recognize when their children are perhaps in need of some further uh, treatment. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think that's been successful. We found that the schools are very much willing to participate and, mm -hmm. and partner up with us and the legislature to promote these programs that are more promoting education. So because we have education, then you have treatment, uh, and then we have recovery. Mm -hmm. And in Nassau County and county government, we're trying to enhance and f have more f uh, resources for recovery. Sober houses, mm -hmm. for example. Mm -hmm. Different types of uh, centers, outside agencies that we work with for treatment. And then something for emergency situations. Emergency situation too. So we established a hotline mm -hmm. uh, for people to call if they are in need, mm -hmm. either to talk or for treatment. And we recently passed a, a law that established a, um, an app mm -hmm. on your phone. And a, a, a person can call from that app and speak to a live person instantly. Mm -hmm. And where they're located, they can direct them immediately to some, some really important uh, services. Very nice. Um, you've done a lot in terms of the uh, infrastructure uh, within Nassau County. Tell us a little bit about the transit, the roads. This yeah. is a very contentious issue for um, everyone that lives here, commutes through the area. You know, um, yeah, well, you know, I, um, we pay a lot in taxes, so um, there's no reason why our roads and our infrastructure should be crumbling. Mm -hmm. And But it has been neglected for a long time, and I was able to secure from the legislature um, five and a $5.25 million in my district, and we, repo we repaved some of the major, major county roads in that district, and they're beautiful now. Mm -hmm. And for a while, it was a real difficult problem. People mm -hmm. were calling every day with damages to their car and flat tires and the like, and now it's, it, it's really getting better. And, and we're seeing that throughout the county, that the, uh, we're, we're, we're trying to make uh, improvements in our, our roads. We just finished... Uh, not in my district, but the Covert Avenue, they just did a new um, underpass mm -hmm. rather than going over the railroad. Mm -hmm. There's a new underpass underneath it, mm -hmm. which is very much important. Uh, with the, third, the third track is being done from Floral Park to Hicksville. So we're doing a lot of things with the infrastructure here in Nassau County, and in my district, I'm always concerned about trying to find ways to improve things. What about transit? Well, you know, we also have a situation now where we need to encourage development, mm -hmm. but we have to have responsible development. Mm -hmm. So there are, for example, communities just like here in Hicksville. Hicksville is a hub. Mm -hmm. It is a hub for transportation. It is a hub for culture. It is a hub for so many things. And we now have an opportunity. The state has given Hicksville $10 million mm -hmm. to use towards their redevelopment, their revitalization. Mm -hmm. And we're hoping that we are, we're going to be on the path now. We have regular meetings to discuss the plans that they have, mm -hmm. to have it a mixed use of recreation, housing, mm -hmm. and business. Mm -hmm. um, and we're, we're optimistic that with transit-oriented development in a place like Hicksville, mm -hmm. you're going to attract young people that want to come back and live here mm -hmm. and, and plant their roots here. Absolutely. And, you know, not just take jobs somewhere else and not come back here. Mm -hmm. So places like Hicksville, Farmingdale, Beth Page, these are communities that are revitalizing their downtown mm -hmm. and creating apartments that are affordable for young people. Okay. And we're trying to do that. Some of our seniors, you know, as they get a little bit older, they can no longer afford to maintain a house, mm -hmm. so they need to downsize. Having affordable housing for seniors is very, very important to me as well. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, We'll talk a little bit more about the development and all of the uh, work that you're doing uh, in terms of uh, revitalizing some of these areas, whether it comes to transit, infrastructure, um, or affordable housing. Um, but we're going to pause here for a quick break. When we come back, we'll continue this conversation. We are talking with Mr. Arnold Drucker of the Nassau County Legislator of the 16th District. We're going through all of the work that he's done and some of the things he hopes to do alongside his party and even a across the aisle, um, which is what politics ought to be about. Um, but stay tuned, we'll be right back after this quick break.
Welcome back from break. You're watching The Bottom Line. Today we're talking with Mr. Arnold Drucker of the Nassau County Legislator of the 16th District as part of our ongoing coverage of the local politics here in Long Island, New York, ahead of this upcoming election season. Mr. Drucker, when we left for break, we were talking a little bit about uh, the development initiatives in place in areas like Hicksville, Bethpage, and a couple of other locations you mentioned here in Nassau County. Um, when people think of Long Island, they think of the uh, the suburbs where you put down your roots, you settle down with your family, um, you know, you raise a family. It, it's not the place that you think of when you think of an urban city center necessarily, mm -hmm. right? But like you mentioned, part of it is bringing those jobs that would keep people here, young people, um, and revitalize some of these downtowns. In your role, how do you balance the urban development while also maintaining the character of Long Island as people have seen it for generations? Well, that's a great question because in my role as a legislator, I do get the opportunity to work with developers mm -hmm. when they have their proposals and they set up their meetings where they want to engage the community. Mm -hmm. I have an opportunity to address them and take a look and see what their plans are. And in addition, Nassau County has an IDA, an industrial development agency, mm -hmm. that works hand in hand with developers to provide them with certain tax incentives to encourage them to to invest here mm -hmm. because without tax incentives developers may not necessarily want to invest here mm -hmm. so we have to work hand-in-hand hand, but there's a double-edged sword to that because in order for you a developer to get the tax incentives that you need to invest we as a county and the industrial development agency mandate that they comply with certain um, benchmarks mm -hmm. they have to provide certain number of jobs okay. Okay, they have to in, um, maintain a certain level of, of, comp of their completion of their project. Mm -hmm. And we have what's called clawback, mm -hmm. so that if they don't fulfill those obligations in terms of employment, because mm -hmm. the idea is, is to build, uh, invest and build a business or a, or a structure or a, a residential building mm -hmm. and employ people to work there. Right, from the local community, from ideally. From the local community, right, so that it, it continues to supply the economic mm -hmm. base to the community. So where there's a clawback, if they don't fulfill those benchmarks, there's money that the county can recover from the tax breaks that they were receiving. So what's encouraging is places like the Seritage Pro Project, which is where the Sears property is in Hicksville, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. which was an institution, but it's a, tr a tremendous piece of land that has now an opportunity to be developed in a sensible way. Mm -hmm. We need to do more sensible transit-oriented development that will meet the needs of the people mm -hmm. and also provide an opportunity for developers to feel that they can they can do something here invest in the community mm -hmm. make make a profit but at the same time enhance the quality of life here in Nassau County mm -hmm. and in this particular district you know one of the things that makes me extremely gratified and happy having grown up in this community is, is seeing the diversity that we're now experiencing mm -hmm. it's amazing and it, I, and I love that you know you talk about urban development well, it's, it's really more about just investing in our community. Investing in our community because we have now a changing population, a population that makes us richer. Mm -hmm. when we, I'm so much involved now in the South Asian community, in the Asian community, in the Hispanic community. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I'm a lawyer. Uh, I, my law practice is in the Spanish neighborhood, too. Mm -hmm. And I'm bilingual. So it's, it's wonderful to be able to relate to people, mm -hmm. all types of people. Mm -hmm. And in, down the road in, in well, Hicksville especially, and down the road in Plainview, the South Asian community is growing by day, 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 daily, it's growing. Mm -hmm. And they contribute so much to our community. And I make sure that I want to make sure that they're engaged, that they're, they're satisfied, that they're comfortable, that their quality of life is important to them. It seems that you uh, clearly work with the South Asian community. And now speaking directly to our viewers, tell us a little bit about some of the work that you've done, not just to empower the community and make their uh, you know day-to-day -day life better uh, in this part of the world, but uh, essentially get them more involved in local government. Well, I try to encourage the young people. Right now in my legislative office, I employ interns mm -hmm. um, from the South Asian community, okay. giving them an, ex an opportunity to learn firsthand what government work is about, mm -hmm. and that's proved very, very rewarding. 
Um, I, I go to all the different South Asian festivals. I've appeared before school boards mm -hmm. and encouraged all the school boards in my district to make sure that Diwali is a, is a holiday, mm -hmm. is a, on the school calendar. Very, Very nice. important. Very nice. And, you know, so many different communities now that we've become so richer from, mm -hmm. they deserve to have their sacred and important days mm -hmm. celebrated as well so that the the students shouldn't feel that they they have to miss school right or that they're left out correct so it, it's important those are things that I've stood up for and I continue to stand up for the Asian American uh, Council mm -hmm. in Nassau County right tell us a little bit about that this is a special council uh, set up just to address the needs of the, the South, South Asian, Asian community. community yes it was just recently set up mm -hmm. and because it's such a growing population mm -hmm. and they're so much engaged and they want to be assimilated but yet they want to maintain their individual culture Identity. Absolutely. And their identity and so it's really working as a partnership between the county and the communities to maintain that identity mm -hmm. but at the same time show them that their voice is important mm -hmm. and they're getting we have many many civic leaders mm -hmm. in the South Asian community who are getting involved they're getting active mm -hmm. and they come down to the legislature and we're putting them in positions where they can be a bridge to their community that's, uh, I think that's some uh, really important work that you're doing, especially when it comes to this, addressing the needs of uh, a minority uh, mm -hmm. group of people in, in Nassau County. Um, Mr. Drucker, Nassau County is the largest county in the United States, larger than certain states' populations. Um, in your role, how do you uh, meet the needs of a district that is not just diverse, but is just uh, large in size and thus has uh, greater needs than a uh, different county might? Well, you know, it, it's a large county. We have uh, a large tax base, thankfully. We mm -hmm. have to continue to grow it. Mm -hmm. But the tax base that we have from the people that come here and invest in businesses, mm -hmm. uh, from people I involved in other types of, uh, of with the schools, um, we're allowing them to flourish. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, by growing the tax base, the county is able to continue to supply the services. We have our first responders. There are, there, the first responders in Nassau County are beyond compared to any other, other uh, county. Mm -hmm. Our fire, police, mm -hmm. uh, emergency services, uh, they're, they're wonderful. And so we have to continue to provide these uh, first responders with the, uh, the, the funds that they need mm -hmm. to continue to do that. And at the same time, um, the school districts are what fuel this population. Absolutely. So our schools, we have some of the best schools in the country here, mm -hmm. and they've been re they've been given awards for it, mm -hmm. and that's what keeps people coming, wanting to come to live here, mm -hmm. and maintaining those schools, which we work hard to do, continues to grow the population, grow the tax base, mm -hmm. and it's a, it's a cycle that keeps mm -hmm. this community wonderful the way it is. You touched on something that is another possibly the most contentious issue, especially in this part of the country taxes. Yes. You mentioned growing the tax base. Um, how do you m maintain the affordability factor of being able to live here, especially when it comes to young professionals, mm -hmm. young families who may not have the resources um, starting out, you know, starter homes um, are not where they used to be, uh, you know, 20, 30 years ago while still growing your tax base? It is a challenge, and but I, I believe that we have been successful in working with like the state of New York to give us community block grants mm -hmm. that provide funds so that communities can start to mm -hmm. develop and, mm -hmm. and create some affordable housing. Um, we're also involved in the reassessment process in Nassau County, mm -hmm. where every single property is being reassessed mm -hmm. so that the values are accurate. Mm -hmm. And Nassau County has a defensible tax rule because what was what plagued this county for almost a decade mm -hmm. was a not an undefensible, indefensible tax rule mm -hmm. that caused the county to have to continue to repay tax grievances mm -hmm. and, and over overpayments. And that was causing a, a tremendous amount of stress. Mm -hmm. So we're getting away from that now. So now that the county has a much more defensible tax rule, mm -hmm. we're not going to have to pay out all of these refunds. Mm -hmm. And we're also getting a fair amount of real estate taxes mm -hmm. that will allow this county to continue to have the, the, the funds that it needs to operate. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, taxes, we pay high taxes, we get great services, but we need to find ways to make it so that more young people can, can come back here. And that's why I work with developers so that when they're doing these development projects, they have one eye mm -hmm. on affordable housing for young people and mm -hmm. for seniors. That's mm -hmm. something that's very, very important about to me.
The reassessment project has come up a lot in uh, some of these conversations that we've had, um, not just with yourself, but other folks um, in this field. For the average person watching at home who has, you know, little, if any idea at all, what that means for them, a homeowner um, in Nassau County, what does the reassessment mean? It means that everyone's house is going to be assessed accurately mm -hmm. and fairly. Mm -hmm. What happened for years was that the tax rolls were frozen and people who grieved their taxes through a corrupt system, I might add, were able to get their taxes reduced. Mm -hmm. But the people who didn't grieve their taxes, they had to now pay the difference. Mm -hmm. And it was an in, un, unjust, inequitable system and that mm -hmm. the, the burden was shifted from those who grieved to those who didn't grieve. Mm -hmm. And it became like a two-class system here mm -hmm. in Nassau County. Mm -hmm. So we're doing away with that and it's becoming now more reliable and dependable that the ta the county will receive taxes that are fair. Mm -hmm. The average homeowner can rest assured that their taxes are going to be more accurate, mm -hmm. more defensible. Now, roughly half the people, about 50%, 52%, will receive a tax increase, mm -hmm. and maybe 48% may see a tax decrease. Okay. So it's, it's pretty much um, even, but it's an opportunity now for us to get this system correct and get this county back on a track where we have a defensible tax rule. And what's the timeline around this? It's being done now, but the, 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 new, the new assessment will go into effect in 2021, so a year from now. Okay, so folks have a little bit of time to get educated on this yes. um, and see how they personally will be affected. Correct. Um, and hopefully, you know, the news will be positive for them. Yes. Um, so, that is something that we will absolutely keep discussing as yes. the uh, progress of this reassessment uh, continues to unfold. Um, Mr. Drucker, you are fairly new to politics in terms of the legislator in Nassau County, although you've been a practicing lawyer for many, many years. Um, tell us a little bit about being uh, not a career politician, what kind of an advantage that gives you? Well, that's a great question because um, having been a lawyer for 35 years in my own private practice mm -hmm. in Queens, um, that has, and also coupled with the fact that I am a lifelong resident of this community, mm -hmm. has given me a skill set and a, an ability to um, understand legislation, mm -hmm. to be able to look at contracts that the county has to Mm -hmm. uh, approve, we have to prove. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it allows me to provide an oversight mm -hmm. uh, of the county business mm -hmm. that I, I feel like I'm, I can do at a, much more, at a much more competent level because of my years as an attorney and also because I own my own practice, I also have an idea of what it's like to own your own business. Mm -hmm. So I think coupled with that and the fact that I'm, I know this community like the back of my hand, I feel like I'm on, the, I'm on the pulse of all issues that are involved in this community. So I have a great perspective and I'm now able to use that and in my law practice over the years I've been able to develop the skill set to deal with all kinds of people and it, it, it works to my advantage in being able to work with colleagues of mine on the legislature who may be on the other side of the aisle. Absolutely. And I feel like I, I, am, I do a good job at working with them. Uh, as much as possible. I think they respect me, I respect them, mm -hmm. and that's the way That's the way a democracy is supposed to work. That's the way Absolutely. the legislative branch of the government is supposed to work. Absolutely. Well, it was wonderful speaking with you a little bit about your role, what you're working on here in Nassau County. Um, in closing, I'd like to have you uh, directly address our viewers and give them any message you want to leave them with today. Well, what, I, what I'd like to leave our viewers, your viewers with is the fact that I love what I do. I love being a legislator. I love representing the residents in this district because I want to be their voice. I want to be their advocate. I want to defend them whenever possible. I want to make sure that the quality of life that we enjoy here is maintained. And I feel that I can continue to do that. I'm not a career politician. I did this three years ago to give back to this community that I love. Mm -hmm. And I want to continue doing it as much as I can and as long as I can because I'm doing it for the right reasons. I'm not doing it to climb political ladders and go on to higher office. Mm -hmm. I, I love what I do. I love being able to contribute to this community in a positive way and I hope to continue to do it for many years. So November 5th, I'm up for re-election mm -hmm. and I'm hoping I can get re-elected.
beautiful. And I'll remind our viewers, early voting starts October 26th. This is new for New York State. So if you're a resident, you're eligible to vote, make sure that you check um, when and where you can go. Of course, there is your place uh, which you are registered at, but from the 26th, you can vote in a handful of places. So if you need to vote near your job or anywhere else, that is an option this year. Mr. Drucker, once again, thank you so much for joining us. This has been a special broadcast of The Bottom Line. Uh, stay tuned. We'll be back with more coverage of Long Island and local politics. But for today, we'll wrap up with this conversation. Thank you so much for watching.